Let's talk about in honor of Roberto Clemente, our Babe Ruth, um, our Jackie Robinson, so to speak. Although I don't think he was the first Latino um, ball player in the league. I'm pretty sure there were some others. Some of us are some of us are of, of the fair complexion, and we can get away with with shit. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, probably not a good way to start this video, but anyway. <laughs> We felt like, oh, so so Major League Baseball is giving baseball players permission, mainly Puerto Rican players, to wear number 21 in honor of, of uh, Roberto Clemente. The Pittsburgh Pirates, the entire team is gonna, are going to wear uh, number 21 for Roberto Clemente Day tomorrow, 9-9 today. You're watching this. Um, so we figured let's rank our top 10 players of Puerto Rican descent. And, but there's a little catch to this. We weren't around during Clemente's time or during Cepeda's time, or Jose Cruz, or a lot of these other legendary Puerto Rican players. So we're going to exempt them, exempt them from this list, but know that we know that you guys are great. Um, we're going to rank the players that we saw play in our lifetimes. Yeah. Um, anything you want to say about Roberto Clemente Day? Uh, I just want to say that if he was included in this list, he'd be the clear-cut number one yeah. for Puerto Rican-born players. He's by far the first in first place in war. He's the only Puerto Rican player with 3000 hits. Um, I think statistically he's a better player than the guy I have ranked at number one mm. besides home runs, just a little foreshadowing there. But uh, the guy was a beast. Um, and I just love watching his videos. Like my, like this he's one of the guys that I always go back to watch the videos because it was always hustling, playing his heart out. So Really grateful for uh, guys like Roberto Clemente. I just want to mention real quick, I don't know if you have any, but I don't have any pitchers in my list. So I have, I kind of had a pitcher, but looking at my list, he's, I'm not going to, I'm not going to include him because Um, he wasn't, there's only one guy, Puerto Rican born guy that would be on the list in terms of longevity. I think we're thinking of the same guy. You want to just, he was Javier Vasquez, but he was yeah. never, he was never, maybe one season in his career, he pitched like an all star. But, and we can fact check that. Did he ever even go to an all star? Was he ever even nominated for one? I don't know. But to me, he, he's just, he would have, he was on this list because of longevity and because he's probably the, the pitcher with the highest war for Puerto Rican born players. Mm-hmm. So but that doesn't Javi- say much. Like, Javi was an average pitcher. He had a 4-2-2 ERA. He was mainly a National League pitcher, though he did spend five seasons in the AL. I remember him as a Yankee. That was the the one season he made the All-Star game. Go ahead. Say your comments or whatever about Yankee bias and all that shit. I don't know. No, man. I wasn't going to say I remember him being decent and then kind of falling off. He ended up finishing the season with a 14-10 and record. That was 2004, actually, the year of the collapse. A 4.91 ERA and a 1.28, 1.288 WHIP on Baseball Reference. So yeah, I kept them off my list too. There's just too many good hitters, and I couldn't. I just couldn't. I couldn't put them up there, man. Sorry. Yep. All right. No problem. All right. So real quick, before we get into our our top ten, I just wanna I wanna point out a couple of stats. One of them was what. My friend Luis here said was that Clemente leads everybody in, in war. The second thing is, uh, oh, by the way, the second place is Carlos Beltran, who has a 70.1 war, I think it was. or uh, 70.05. 70.05. 70.05. Uh, the Puerto Rican home run leader is Carlos Delgado with 473. Underrated, should be in the Hall of Fame, by the way. Mm-hmm. Beltran is next with 433. Clemente leads all Puerto Rican hitters with 3,000 hits, which you said. He also leads with the highest batting average of 317. The next man is Robbie Alomar, who has a career 300. Alomar leads all Puerto Ricans with 474 stolen bases. Delgado leads with OPS. Uh, in OPS, he has a 929 career OPS. Juan Gonzalez is next with a 904 OPS. Juan Gonzalez, by the way, one of the most um, feared, one of the most feared hitters, and Yankee one of the ki- most Yankee killer. All right, enough already. And one hey, of you the got most- eight. <laughs> That's that's right. Puerto, that's Puerto Rico's David Ortiz right there, right? And one of the most imitatable batting stances of all time. Just look it up, and him and imitate. him and, him and Miguel Andujar have a really similar violent, violent heli- swing, yeah, helicopter swing. Yeah, yeah, 
He, yeah. He held his bat all the way up here. I don't even know yeah. how he swung that shit. Anyway, um, I just wanted to point those things out. Let's go to our list. We'll go. We'll start with 10. You share yours. I'll share mine. And we'll talk about it a little bit. Hit us. All right. So like I was saying before, I couldn't decide on number 10. I was going to give it to Javi Vasquez just because he's the one pitcher. He would be. He would have been the one pitcher on this list. And because of longevity, he's number one in war in terms of Puerto Rican born pitchers. Although that doesn't say much because there aren't too many. But um, I'm giving it to Javi Baez, number 10. Wow. And that's what I'm saying, man. I really couldn't figure out who would be number 10. And I wanted to give it to Javi Baez because, to me, he's, he's like that household name of that new age baseball. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and I think that says a lot because the league is saturated, super saturated with talent right now. And he stands out. And he had an MVP caliber season last year or the year before. I don't remember. But he's upped his home run output. He's amazing at playing his position, plays multiple positions. Uh, I think he embodies Puerto Ricans. But then, just because, not that I care about war, but you would be shocked to know Carlos Correa, Carlos Correa has a way better war than Javi Baez. So to Does me, he? way That's better. That's surprising. It is surprising, man. That's why I think that stat is bullshit. But then again, <laughs> Robert, Roberto Clemente uh, by far has the highest war of any Puerto Rican-born player. And if you rank those players by war, it kind of makes sense. Like the, the stat does show something, but I think it leaves a lot to be desired. So to me, number 10, I couldn't decide between Javi Baez and Carlos Correa. I didn't want to give it to Carlos Correa because you know how we feel about him on the show. Mm -hmm. So I gave it to Javi Baez. I could. I'm gonna. I, when you get to number nine, I'm gonna guess who your nine is. Based on that, I think I know who it is. But my number ten is Yadier Molina. Um, mm. he, so let's preface this with that I'm I'm a, I'm slightly older than you are. So I'm sure that there's one or two players on this list that I saw that you probably didn't see, um, or that I remember rather that you didn't remember. But Yadi falls on that list at number ten for me, um, for a lot of reasons. First off, he comes from a, a family of catchers. You had Benji, Yadier, Jose Molina, and he's the best of all three. He's been playing for fucking 75 years, it seems like. He's the leader of the St. Louis Cardinals. Um, and, yeah, I just think he's, he's, to me, he embodies Puerto Rico perfectly. A proud dude, lots of swagger. Um, Yadier Molina is number 10 for me. Okay. Respect. Let me guess your number we nine, have, real quick. We have a way different list, by the way, just based off what you said. But yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be funny. <laughs> um, you, your number nine is Francisco Lindor. Number nine, I got Francisco Lindor. I think when it's all said and done, he might be top five on the list of Puerto Rican-born players. Uh, every year since he's been in the league, he's produced can hit for power and also another player that embodies Puerto Rico sticks out young, young, young player in today's age. Uh, I think he's the face of the Indians. Future Yankee. Maybe. By the way, man, I should have said something about the Yankees, but I'm not going to say it here. I'll say it somewhere <laughs> else. Uh, his lowest finish in not including his, his, uh, his rookie season, but, he finished in 15th in MVP voting last year. That was his lowest in MVP voting every year since he's been in the league. Two gold gloves, two silver sluggers. Uh, just good all around. Play shortstop, which I think is the hardest position in baseball. And yeah, man, I think he, he's another one. Represents Puerto Rico the, the right way. So he's number nine for me. Nice. For me, number nine is... I'm going to throw you way off yeah, off course here, man. Ruben Sierra, ladies and gentlemen. Oh Do you remember Ruben Sierra? Of course, yeah. I was thinking about putting him on the list, but... Go ahead. Okay, Ruben Sierra played for a long-ass time in baseball and was one of those, just one of those kind of quiet players. Like, you didn't hear so much about him. But he was an assassin. For me, at least, um, for the Yankees in the postseason, uh, was a monster. In 
two th- in 2003 i know they lost the world series but he, he hit 500 in the alcs um alcs against boston in 04 333 2005 alds against the angels 333 i know that they lost all those series but was a beast and played a long time played on a lot of teams um but if i'm going to to follow this list by how i'm calculating it which i don't know if you want me to reveal I'm picking Ruben Sierra. I think he's very underrated. His his war doesn't represent who what he really means to his team, in my opinion. No, yeah, you you make a good point, and, and longevity plays a big part here. Uh, I mostly remember Ruben Sierra for his Yankees and you know early two thousand performances. A lot of stints with the Yankees. One of those guys that just kept kept coming back. He was there in ninety five. Yeah. yeah, he had uh, his moments. Came back in in the two thousands. Love yeah. Ruben Sierra. I like I like Ruben Sierra, but he didn't make my list. Mostly because of what you said, you know, underrated, but was a quiet guy to me. I just I didn't even feel like he was a presence half the time, you know, like unless he was hitting a home run, which is cool, which you thought he was there to do, but just saying, man, he's not on my list. All right, man. Fuck you too. Uh number eight. Who do you got for number eight? Number eight for me, man, is Juan Gonzalez. Mm. Nice. Third on the list of all time for Puerto Rican born players and home runs. One less than uh, Carlos Beltran. Let me just double check that real quick. Yep. One less home run than Carlos Beltran in three less years. Feared hitter, Yankee killer. Uh, I think this guy was a beast. He did have that uh, accusation of taking steroids so to me that's why he's a little bit lower on the list for me and what more can i say man watch this guy highlight watch this guy's highlights and just watch him destroy some baseballs man this guy would hit 50 home runs in this new age juiced baseball era and he had a bunch of seasons where he hit 40 home runs uh let's see here one two three four five Five seasons of 40 home runs or more. Then he had a 35 home run season. Two MVPs with the Texas Rangers and other MVP finishes in other seasons and silver sluggers all over the place. That's number eight. I agree. I agree. He's my number eight, too. Juan Gonzalez. Damn, here we um, go, man. Don't, probably the only time we're ever going to agree, man. Probably the only time I'm ever gonna agree. Like I said, imitatable batting stance was a dynamic player for like ten seasons there. Um, too bad he he went to waste with the steroid accusations. You saw his numbers go down after that, um, but still one of the greats, one of the greats yep. of all time. Quiet, a quiet assassin too. Like you don't hear about this guy anymore. Um, all right, number seven. All right, man. This is where we get into a little bit of you're gonna you're gonna get a boner, and I'm gonna be like, hey, man, calm it down, throw some water on yourself. Let's go. Let's go. Number seven for me, and originally he was gonna be my number ten, but numbers don't lie. Jorge Posada is number seven. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So I just want to confirm: five championships with the New York Yankees. Um, so Posada was there in ni- in 90, he wasn't, Girardi was the catcher in 96, but I think he was technically there. No, Posada was on the Yankees. Yeah. With, with, he was with the Yankees in 96. I wouldn't know if that would count as like his world series, and but this is one of the things. And, and this, another member that's on my list, w- one with the Yankees in that time span to, ex- except for 2009. And they always leave them off of the whole core four shit. Um, this other member, the Yankees just lost by the way. Um, hmm. I'm turn on my TV. Turn it. Let's turn that off right there. Don't need to watch that. Um, this, the person that they left off is for me is more of a member of the core four than Posada was. That's all I have to say. But yeah, yes, I, five championships. I know we're going with this. So, just just to throw this out there, Yadier Molina is headed for the Hall of Fame. Can we agree? Yeah, for sure. Statistically, Jorge Posada is a better hitter in every category yeah. than Yadier Molina. Um, and I don't even think Jorge Posada was on a ballot, was he? Or he's no longer on a ballot. He would still be there. It's still within the 10-year range of his retirement. 
But I don't think there's any way Jorge Posada gets into the Hall of Fame. And this guy won, let's, count, let's just say it's four championships since we don't want to count the 96 one. Uh, what separates him from Yadier Molina is the gold gloves, I would say, and the fact that Yadier Molina is the leader of the Cardinals. Jorge Posada was part of the core four, if you want to, if you want to say, call it that way. Um, Yadier Molina is known for calling the games and, you know, uh, steering his pitchers in the right direction. I don't think the Yankees were ever known for pitching, but Jorge Posada was known for hitting. I think he was a great hitter for a catcher. I'm pretty sure he's in a bunch of top 10 categories in, in catching mm-hmm. uh, hitting statistics. I'm not going to go through all of them. I think I've said enough about Jorge Posada. That's my number. What was this? Number seven? Number six? Number seven. Seven. Mine is a uh, mine is gonna be a surprise to you, man. It's gonna come out of straight out of the left field, but I'm going Mike Lowell, third baseman. Mike Lowell. Wow. Part of that 04 team that crushed my heart. Was he? No, he was part of the 03 team and the 07 Red Sox team. Yeah. Um. But Mike Lowell again, one of those quiet guys who was deadly, man. I mean. I know he has a career 279 batting average, but he's, he made three all-star games, four all-star games, was in the MVP running in 2003 in a silver slugger. Um, he's hit, let's see, he, he has 100 or more RBIs, 90 RBI seasons all throughout the board. One of those guys that was just fundamentally like almost perfect on the field and a solid bat. So I, I go Mike Lowell as my number seven. Yeah, and by he the way, was... since you mentioned Posada, I'm just going to get it out of the way. Posada is my number six, too. Um, okay. And I just want to point out, I just saw on Baseball Reference, Posada has, he's not included in the 96 championship. So this kind of makes my case of the whole core, core four nonsense a yeah. little more because Bernie, too, has, I just gave it away. Bernie, too, has four championships with the Yankees. So they both have four. Bernie was there from the start. Posada came in a little bit later. I know he's homegrown and stuff. But stop excluding Bernie. I know core four rhymes, but can we fucking like include Bernie in there somehow? So, so I want to just quick correction. Mike Lowell was part of the 2003 Marlins, Marlins. who won the World Series against the Yankees. And then he was part of the 2007 right. Red Sox who won the World Series. So he's a dual World Series championship. By the champion. way, World Series MVP in 2007. Mm. Um, 400 batting average, 500 on base, 800 slugging. They swept the Cardinals in 18 plate appearances. He had six hits, one home run, four RBIs. Um, beast. Guy's a beast. Yeah, you know what? I was thinking about putting him on my list, but he is not on my list. But you're a fraud. Um, <laughs> so, so I gave you my number six. Who's your number six? My number six is a guy you already mentioned. Yadi or Molina? Yadi. Uh Two World Series, I believe. So one I thing so. I wanted one thing I wanted to mention about Jorge Posada before the reason why he he's even on my list and he's not going to the Hall of Fame, but I think it says something when you're you play your whole career for one team mm-hmm. and that team has a bunch of success. They could have been gotten rid of. He was a great hitter, though. So, but what I'm saying is, is like if you need proof to why a guy is good, just look at his career. Played more than a decade for the same team. That team just so happened to win a bunch of World Series. He was there at the center of it. So the same goes for Yadier Molina. This guy's played for a long as hell time. He's still the starting catcher of the St. Louis Cardinals. I know he has two World Series. Mm-hmm. I don't know about three. I know he has two. I always thought Pools had three with the Cardinals, and I think he, he might. But Yadier Molina, to me, even though he's not better statistically a better hitter than Jorge Posada, I think he has like what is it nine gold gloves? Um, let's see. He has nine. Gold nine gloves. He has nine gold gloves. Uh, eight in a row. Four platinum gloves. Wow. He has eight gold gloves in a row from two thousand eight to two thousand fifteen. Uh, just as many All Star appearances. A couple of MVP nods there. So it's it's weird, man. It almost makes you feel like. Jorge Posada doesn't have this kind of uh, trophy uh, display, right? But Mm -hmm. Yadier Molina does. We think Yadier Molina is headed to the Hall of Fame. To me, that's why he's ahead of guys like Jorge Posada and the other guys that I mentioned in the list. 
I um, think I think that you have to put his glove in the mix too. You know, yeah, you have guys important. like uh, you have guys like Ozzy Smith in the world in the God damn, in the Hall of Fame because of his defense, essentially. Yeah. Um, another Cardinal, by the way. You have to give Yadi credit for that too. And by the way, while you were talking, I just went in to fan graphs and sorted it by catcher all time Molina 16th with hits 1987 um only 15 catchers have hit 2,000 or more hits he'll he'll be the he'll be the 16th and he'll climb up that list because I'm assuming he's going to play at least another season um if he plays another season you have to assume he'll he'll get another 100 plus hits he'll probably end up ahead of Joe Maurer who I, I also think is a hall of fame catcher Mm -hmm. um and right behind mike piazza so i think he's definitely in the hall of fame no doubt about it yeah and that's why he although the next guy that i'm going to mention won't be in the hall of fame i feel like i had to put yadi up there at number six because he is headed for the hall of fame and if there's anybody who is the a face of puerto rican players it's yadi and melina it's let's just be honest like that guy's like yeah. I'm trying to think of the comparison in for Dominican players today. I want to say Albert Pujols, clearly, mm -hmm. but he's a way better talent, I think, than Yadier Molina. So it's almost like a given, right? Yeah. But to me, Yadier Molina is just still like, like... Adrian Beltre. Adrian Beltre is a good one, yeah. Like Even a, though he's like also a, a better talent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bel Beltre is, a, for, for me, a first ballot Hall of Famer. So, so is Yadi, But Beltre was a understated you know, embodied his culture, his culture the right way. Like, I, I, I'm, not, yeah. I don't, I'm not trying to throw guys under the bus, but you had guys like Manny Ramirez, who was kind of a joke, although I yeah. loved Manny. I'm not going to lie, Manny but too. Manny being Manny. You know what I mean? Like, not necessarily who you want to embody your culture. Not, not trying to say that he's a bad guy or anything, blah, blah, blah. But Adrian Beltre put up the numbers, played elite defensively, and represented the Dominican Republic the way we want to be represented. And I, I yep. feel like Yadi Molina is, is very similar in that way. Um, and he is, a, they're he both, is they're the both leaders, too. Like, you know. So, yeah. Um, yep. since, since I messed up the order, I'll go first. My number five is a guy who should be in the Hall of Fame, in my opinion. Underrated. You don't hear about him anymore so much. Carlos Delgado is my number Carlos five. Delgado. Nice, nice. And there's a bug in my room now, but I got his ass. You dead. You dead. <laughs> <laughs> Carlos Anything Delgado. You like? Yeah. Uh, leads all Puerto Rican players, as I mentioned before, in home runs. He has 473 career home runs. He leads all Puerto Rican players in OPS and slugging, I believe. So OPS 929, slugging 546. Has a career 383 on base percentage. This guy made two all-star teams, uh, three-time silver slugger. I don't think he ever won a World Series, but was one of those guys that, let me see, he hit 30 or more home runs, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 consecutive times, 11 for his career, went 30 and 100, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times in his career, um, led the league in OPS in 2003, was runner-up in the MVP voting. Alex Rodriguez won that season. There you go. There's your mention. Fun fact, uh, CT. Delgado's OPS was higher than Alex Rodriguez that season. Um, A-Rod had more home runs. Probably why he, he won that award. Fraud. Um, Delgado, man. I, I, I wanted to make him number one in my, my list, but I felt like the, guy, the guys I had ahead of him are just, are just slightly better. But you can make an argument for Delgado to be number one, in my, in my opinion. Yeah, man. And I agree with everything you said. My, let me give you my number five. But yeah, Carlos Delgado, super consistent throughout his career, super deadly. Um, number five for me is Bernie Williams. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Burn, baby, burn. So, like Manny mentioned, not only. Oh. Was... <laughs> <laughs> so, no, like, my. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, I know, man. I just want to, I wanted to make it awkward for you. <laughs> So, uh, like Manny mentioned, Bernie Williams should be considered part of that core four over Jorge Posada. Mm -hmm. He's he's ranked higher on my list for that reason. I think he was more important to that Yankees, to that late Yankees dynasty than Jorge Posada to me. 
Um, and like I mentioned before, like this guy played his entire career playing center field for the Yankees. And I think that mm-hmm. says a lot because again, the Yankees could have had anybody playing center field for them. And it was Bernie Williams. I think what he had like 15 years in his 16 career with seasons with the Yankees, 16 seasons with the New York Yankees in which they, with him there, they won four championships. And this guy, I don't know if any more since then, but I know that at one point he was the all time RBI leader in the postseason. The postseason. Yeah. He probably still is. I'm pretty sure he still is. I mean, how many I'm guys sure. have appeared that many times in the postseason? And I know it's like the whole argument that you can have, you know, well, he had to get to the postseason to have that record. Same thing with Jeter having the most hits in the postseason, whatever. But those guys were there, man, and they they came through. So to me, he's number five. Um, I don't know why I'm just going to mention this, but I could care less about his whole music thing. I think I <laughs> I always hear them sprinkle that in the Mike Francesa show when he goes to record at Bar A. But Bernie Williams, the player, number five on my list for the all-time Puerto Rican-born MLB players. My number four. Actually, before you give your number four, since you already mentioned it, Carlos Delgado is my number four. Mm, nice. And for the, all the reasons that you mentioned, all-time Puerto Rican leader in home runs, uh, super deadly, again, all that all that mumbo-jumbo. No need to spend too much time on it, but Carlos Delgado is my number four. Okay. And my number four is Bernie Williams. We swapped oh, okay. positions on Bernie Williams. For you guys who love batting average, Bernie Williams hit 300 or better. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight consecutive seasons. He was the batting champion in 1998, hit 339 uh, with a 422, 575 on base. Those are ridiculous. I mean, 422 on base, 575 slugging. Uh, ridiculous numbers. Um, one of the clutches hitters you'll see. Weird. The guy was, he was strange, but he like, just came up in the biggest moments. And I know that he won some controversial gold gloves in there. He was he was never the best center fielder, kind of like Derek Jeter won a lot of gold gloves at shortstop for the Yankees. Um, but he he did the job, and he manned the same position that Joe DiMaggio, Mickey Mantle did, and he did it for 16 seasons, 16 consecutive seasons, and ended his career on a high note with a 281 batting average, hit 12 home runs, 61 RBIs. I love Bernie. He's my number four. Uh, number three for you. Top three, uh, man. Number three for me is second baseman Roberto Alomar. Damn. Damn. That's right. Uh, Roberto Alomar was a solid player. A lot of all-star selections. A lot of gold gloves. A lot of MVP nods. Mm-hmm. Had a long career as well. Uh, obviously not known for power. His highest career home run total was 24. But I got to I gotta think he has to be second or third in the all-time Puerto Rican hits list. He has 2,724 hits for his career. That would be fourth all-time behind Carlos Beltran, Roberto Clemente. Not in this order, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, Clemente, and Mar- Pudge, and Beltran. Yeah. Um, he's, on, he's only behind Beltran by one hit. Yeah, and I think he had uh, less games, probably. Mm, let me see. Beltran, yep. 20. In over 200 less games. Yeah. yeah. Over 200 less games. Uh, Roberto Alomar, obviously, I'm not going to pretend like I watched his entire career, but he was still relevant when I started watching be- baseball. Um, he's a Hall of Famer. Known for his defense, known for hitting old school. Today's second baseman's like fucking Daniel Murphy, suck at defense, but hit a bunch of home runs. Um, uh, he's not he's not this breed of, you know, Robinson Cano who hits home runs and plays great defense, but mm-hmm. that's what we were given back in the 90s, guys. Guys like Roberto Alomar, that's my number three. And and did the he so he's my number two to jump ahead uh-huh. a little bit. And then I'll tell you who my number three is in a minute. But he did the little things right. Sure, he didn't hit 40 home runs, but he got on base a ton. He has a 371 career on base, got on base at 400 or better 
at a 400 or better clip. I see at least a handful of times here. Um, I have to, I should have yeah. also thrown in there. He's the all time stolen base leader by far as a Puerto Rican player. Nice. Uh, 474. Two, World Series, two yep. World Series with the Toronto Blue Jays. Um, he's my number, he's my number two for me. My number three was the one and only Pudge Rodriguez. Um, Ooh. is he not on your list? Nah, man. You, uh, I'm kidding. He's my number three. He's my number two. Oh. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So he's he's so we swapped. Th- oh, right. Wait, he's my number three. Yeah, Alomar's my number two. We have a lot of swappages here. Mm. Um, again, implications of steroids. Put that aside. MVP, fourteen-time All Star, two thousand and three World Series, thirteen Gold Glove awards, seven Silver Sluggers, and he got the NLCS MVP for that against the Chicago Cubs. That the the infamous. Um, who was the kid that interfered with the foul ball? I don't remember him. It's Steve something. Steve something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> Pudge Rodriguez, right. man. Steve something. Yeah. That's perfect. So, I had Pudge Rodriguez as my number two, mostly because I, I feel like his his accolades are better than Roberto Alomar. Um, he, could, he could be considered the greatest catcher of all time, at least mm-hmm. in our era. Our era. Um, he was a better hitter than guys like Yadier Molina. Had a career 311 home runs. That's a lot for a catcher. So I thought, and he had a, a super long career as well. So that's, you know, we pretty much, I think we all know where this is going, but that's my number two. Pudge. Worst, worst nickname of all time, by the way. Yeah, hey, Pudge. Hey, Pudgy. He's number three all time uh, F War, Fangraphs War, uh, behind. Gary Carter, who has a 69.4, and Johnny Bench, who has a 74.8. Yvonne Rodriguez has a 69.2. Um, ahead of Carlton Fisk and Yogi Berra and Mike Piazza and so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. Um, all right. Number one for me is Carlos Beltran. Same for me too, man. The guy this just guy- did everything yeah. right. Yeah. I... Um, uh- I got to admit, I was upset when he was caught in the middle of all this shit that went on the last year because I always liked Carlos Beltran as a player. Although when I was a kid, I got to be honest with you, I don't know why they always used to pit Dominicans against Puerto Ricans. And it was like him, him and Carlos Delgado versus like Manny and Ortiz type of feud that was going on. But you got to call it what it is, man. Carlos Beltran, five-tool player, performed well in the postseason. Um Wish he had gotten his uh, World Series. Did he? He never got that, right? Um, Not with the Astros. Was, w- yeah, he was there in 2017. He was, was with he? them in 2017, yeah. Thought it was with, oh, okay. So, good for him. Well, th- that's, though- when, that's when they put. That's when they made him and Alex Cora the masterminds behind this whole thing. And I'm sorry. It's not a Puerto Rican thing. The whole thing that happened isn't, isn't because they're minorities. It's, so, I'm not going to go there. Um, but they pinned it on them because they weren't a part of the organization anymore when this all went down. Yeah. Beltran was hired by the Mets to be their manager. Alex Cora was over in Boston. So all of a sudden, it's the two guys who are no longer with us are the ones who were the masterminds behind all the sign-stealing bullshit. I disagree with it. Beltran has always been a, a dynamic hitter, home run hitter, ab- hits for average, hits for contact, does everything the right way. And as he got older, he became a, a very influential figure inside of clubhouses for the Yankees, for the Astros, for the Cardinals late in his life. And one thing that always stands out to me is his postseason production. I remember, yeah. I think it was with Houston early on. He just kept hitting home runs. I think it was like in the, in the early 2000s. He was just a beast. I have it right here. Uh, in the NLDS and the NLCS in 2004 with the Cardinals, he hit eight home runs total. Um, and I think that was a record or something. The guy was I mean, a monster. Like, it's like a 60, 65 games, postseason batting. Uh, 1021 OPS. Incredible. Uh, 307 uh, batting average, 412 on base, 609 slugging. The guy was just uh, uh, one of the most, and one of those guys that you just rooted for anytime you saw him. Yeah, he's um, third. He's second all time home runs, Puerto Rican born players, third all time in hit, has 300 stolen bases, um, 2,700. And change some change hits. 
And real quick, I'm going to plug a stat that I'm trying to work. I'm calling it net runs right now. And it's I'm calculating how many runs a player is responsible for, be it by the home run, be it by an RBI, all that stuff. RBI is, is uh, repetitive, so I'm subtracting home runs from it, runs scored, runs produced, all that stuff. I'm calling it net runs. How many runs this one player has crossed the plate himself um, for and driven a player to score a run for via the home run or whatever? Anyway, I'm talking a lot. He's responsible for 27, uh, 2,734 net runs the next player is roberto clemente 2481 Hmm. and he played about 150 games more but still that's that's a a 300 run advantage basically that that shows you that he was dynamic he he uh he did it it wasn't just a home run it was it was a single slap single that to the other side that drove the runner in it was a sack fly it was this guy did everything the right way yeah um yeah, bring him back, think, guys. Forgive him. Honestly, yeah, man. Carlos Beltran was a beast. Hall of Famer in my eyes. I don't know about you. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. Um, and this is that's pretty much our Roberto Clemente right there, man. I mean, if you want to look at, like, he's you, you could argue that he was a little better than Roberto Clemente in terms of, like, all-around game. Yeah. Uh, and he is second all-time Puerto Rican-born players in war, if you care about that sort of stuff. So nine All Star Game appearances, beast all around. I'm glad that we both agree that he's the number one. Is this the on only this one list. we agreed with? No, I think we also agreed with. Uh, we swapped a, cu- a few players. No, we agreed. We agreed on someone else. I remember. I'll tell you who it was right now. We agreed on Juan Gonzalez. Juan Gonzalez, number eight. Good list, man. A lot of great Puerto Rican players. I kind of want to do this for Dominicans next time man yeah and by the way you you made a good point when when we when i found out about the puerto rican players wearing number 21 for roberto clemente day tomorrow or today nine nine um you said that he is kind of like he's like our babe ruth and why shouldn't all all players just like jackie robinson should wear number 21 to honor this guy especially all latino players not just puerto rican players and I agree 100%. Um, yeah, like, why, why make this exclusive? I get it. I mean, the, f- for people who are not aware, but for, like, Hispanics, like us being Dominicans, when Dominicans do something, it means more for us. Obviously, I get that. Like, it's culture for everybody. Same thing goes for Puerto Ricans, Cubans, and everything. Like, we're proud to we, – we hold these guys up to a higher standard. We're proud to see these guys perform. Like, they're our champions, right? But I feel like Roberto Clemente transcended all that. Um, God knows how many Pirates fans there are because of this guy, right? So I'd almost feel like, I mean, the guy died. Didn't he die delivering food to people in Puerto Rico? It was some crazy plane crash shit that he went through. Uh, I think that this guy should be treated the same way we treat Jackie Robinson. Not that we should retire his number, I believe it was number 27, all across baseball. Clemente 21. 21, okay. Uh, not that we should retire his number all across baseball, but like for something like let's wear his number on Roberto Clemente Day. I mean, there's a reward that goes out to one player on each team uh, every year. You don't think it makes sense to open this up to the entirety of mm-hmm. MLB baseball? And that's the thing. It's a choice if you want to wear this number. It's not like everybody wears... It's not like the case where everybody wears the number 42 on Jackie Robinson Day, which is the best, which is a good thing, by the way. I'm, I'm happy mm. that's the way it is. But if it's a choice, man, let it let it be everybody's choice to wear Roberto Clemente's number. Yeah, I'm with you. I agree with that 100%. Um, I was trying to think of who who is uh, who's our Roberto Clemente. And the first person that comes to mind is Juan Marichal for some reason. Um, just because of the time period that he play, played in. I think they played in similar um eras and he was for me a name that him and and one of the alus like felipe alu or one of those guys yeah um just he's just a name that i remember hearing growing up and and dominicans were so proud of of having a guy like him in the league and he was so dominant um yeah no yeah, so, yeah. In, in terms of time i agree in terms of what his what the reward 
that's named after him stands for. I almost have to feel like Albert Pujols is like our, our Roberto Clemente almost like. How about Pedro? Well, I'm just saying like that Roberto Clemente reward goes out to people who give back to the community. Mm-hmm. And to me, I think Albert Pujols, from what I've seen, man, I only follow his Instagram account, but it seems like he does the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys like him and Nelson Cruz, but just the fact that Albert Pujols is the higher tier of talent than uh, arguably than the greatest of all time. Yeah, probably is. I, I, you know, but whatever, man. Roberto Clemente is our Roberto Clemente. I don't want to. I don't want to draw the line anymore between <laughs> Dominicans and Puerto Ricans, man. I I was brought up to believe that we had this like long lasting feud, which it's. It's true it's on bullshit, some level. Man. I, I haven't had, growing up, I never had an issue with anybody of Puerto Rican descent. I feel like if you if you bring that to the table, the division, you're going to get division back. I feel like that's how it is. And I not was that just brought that, up to always treat everybody the same way. So Yeah, not, not that there was like a division, a, com- a competition. Like a, yeah. like a competitive, like mm-hmm. our, our country versus your country. Same thing, like throw Cuba into there. Throw Mexicans into there, I guess. Like we have that Caribbean series going on yeah, all yeah. every year, you know. So that's what I'm talking about. But I think Roberta Clemente is our Roberta Clemente. I like that. Perfect yeah. way to finish it. Um, that's it. That's all we got. Follow Luis at Hova Mojo on Twitter. Follow me at Manny Go Three. Follow the show at WT the Show and go to the website wttspod.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. Peace. Peace. Thank you.